Welcome to Supply Chain Management. In the last lecture, we talked about the different distribution networks. And now in this lecture, we are going to talk about how to select a distribution network design. We, we are going to talk about online sales and the distribution network affected by online sales. And at the end, we are, go we are going to look at a few uh, different examples of companies and in the end we are going to talk about how distribution networks are set up in practice. With this let's start the lecture. A network designer needs to consider product characteristics as well as network re requirements when deciding on the appropriate delivery network. The various networks which we discussed in the previous, um, the previous lecture have different strengths and weaknesses. So here are the six different networks we talked about. And you can see based on their, uh, whether it is inventory, transportation, facility handling, the costs or service requirements, they are different. And here the numbers here correspond to one corresponding to the strongest performance and six corresponding to the weakest performance. Only niche companies end up using a single distribution network. Most companies are best served by a combination of delivery networks. And the combination used depends on the product characteristics and the strategic position of the firm that the firm is targeting. So the suitability of different delivery designs uh, in various situations, you can kind of look at this here. Um, so here you can look for a high demand product. Plus two is very suitable. Minus two is very unsuitable. For a high demand product, a retail storage with customer pickup and maybe distributor storage with last mile delivery. For a medium demand product, you can again see how there is a change in which network is suitable here. So let's talk a little bit about the impact of online sales on customer service. So when selling physical products that cannot be downloaded, online sales takes longer to fulfill a customer request than does a retail store because of the shipping time involved. So the customer who requires a short response time may not use the internet to order a product. Now there is no such delay for information goods. The internet has facilitated almost instantaneous access to movies, music, books in digital form. So remember in the past, if you go back 20, 25 years ago, movie, you had to buy a, C, a, a DVD, a music in a CD, it was a physical product, a book was a physical product. But once you're able to digitize it, you can speed up the response to the customer using online. Product variety. So the company selling online finds it easier to offer a larger selection of products than most brick and mortar stores. Take example of Netflix, offers a much larger selection of movies than any video rental store. Product availability. By aggregating inventory, a company sells, selling online improves product availability, better information, on customer preferences also allows firms selling online to improve availability. With regard to customer experience, online sales affect customer experience in terms of access, customization, and convenience. Now, unlike most retail stores that are open only during businesses, the internet allows a customer to place an order at any convenient time. So, you know, two o'clock in the morning, you wake up and you can place an order on amazon.com. Faster time to market. The, a firm can introduce a new product much more quickly online as compared to physical channels. 
a firm that sells PC through physical channels, must first produce enough units to stock the shelves at its distributors and retailers before it starts seeing the revenue from the new product. Now, if you sell online, on the other hand, a new product is available as soon as the first unit is ready to produce. Order visibility. The internet makes it possible to provide visibility of order status. From a customer perspective, it is crucial to provide this visibility because online orders has no physical equivalence to customer shopping for an item at a retail store. Returnability is the hard part in an online store, which typically arrives from a centralized location. It is much easier to return a product to a retail store. The proportion of returns is also likely to be higher in an online order because customers are unable to touch and feel the product. And as you can see, that is an important aspect. Let's continue with the impact of online sales on customer service. So let's look at direct sales to customers. Now, internet allows manufacturers and other uh, members on a supply chain that do not have direct contact with the customer in traditional channels to get customer feedback and build a relationship with customers. Now, last 10 years, social networking channels such as Facebook and Twitter allow firms to directly pitch products on promotions to the customer. Flexible pricing, product portfolio, and promotions. Given the ease in changing prices assortments online, the internet allows a company selling online to manage revenues from its available product portfolio much more effectively than traditional channels. Promotion information can be conveyed to customers quickly and inexpensively using the internet as long as the business has access to its customer networks. Let's take Groupon. Groupon has used social networking online to promote promotion to its customers. The internet and cell phone companies can enhance the convenience and lower the cost of revenue collection, especially in small amounts. And this is very important. You have efficient fund transfers, which is better than handing out cashes or vouchers. So let's look at uh, the impact of sales, online sales on cost. Uh, this is just not a customer service, but also on cost. So inventory, it allows you to lower inventory if customers are willing to wait. It can also allow you to postpone variety until after the customer order is received. Let's take an example. Amazon is able to aggregate its inventory of books at a few warehouse, houses, warehouses. In contrast, Barnes & Nobles need a lot more inventory because it must carry a significant portion of its stock at retail stores. So the key point to note here is that relative benefit of aggregation is small for high demand uh, items with low variability. But if you have a low demand item with large variability, that's where the benefit of aggregation comes in. When it comes to facilities, you have two basic type of facility costs that must be included in this analysis. Costs related to number of locations number and location of facilities in a network and costs associated with operations that take place in these facilities. A company selling online can reduce network facility costs by centralizing operations, thereby decreasing the number of facilities required. Let's take Netflix. Netflix is able to satisfy demand for DVD rentals from about 50 warehouses, whereas Blockbuster, this was the old Blockbuster, needed thousands of retail outlets to serve its customer. Now with ongoing operating costs, customer participation in selection and order placement allows a company selling online to lower its resource costs relating to staffing a call center. So this comes under costs associated with operations. Online sales can lower a firm's order fulfillment cost because it does not have to fill an order as soon as it arrives. Um, so therefore, you know, retail stores must staff its sales counters so that more cashiers are available during, especially during peak periods. So with online sales, if a reasonable, bu reasonable buffer of unfulfilled orders is maintained, the rate of order fulfillment can be made significantly smoother than the rate at which order arrives. Again, a lot of advantages here.
Now downside, places like if you have groceries, online sales require firms to perform tasks that are currently performed by the customer at retail stores, affecting both handling and transportation costs. Now, internet has significantly lowered the cost of transporting information goods in digital form, like movies, musics, and good books. Non-digital products, aggregating inventory increases outbound transportation relative to inbound transportation. And finally, information. An online seller can share demand information throughout the supply chain, improving the visibility the internet can be used to share planning and forecasting information within the supply chain, further improving coordination. This helps reduce overall supply chain costs. You can match supply and demand better. So take a look at this blank B2C online sales scorecard. So you, a firm can use this to summarize the impact of online sales in each of the areas identified earlier. The, the value of setting up online sales is not the same in every industry. So let's take Amazon, have seen their profits increasing uh, dramatically going online. Um, there's another company called Blue Nile. Webvan and many other online groceries have gone out of business. So just going online is not going to fix all your problems. This core card here can be used to understand how online sales have affected the performance on different supply chain networks. So let's look at this from different companies, Dell, Amazon, Netflix, and let's pick another company of your own. We will work through this in your class as we uh, work one-on-one -on, -one on the class. This is not going to be part of your uh, lecture here, but we will actually work on this in class. So let's look at the distribution networks in practice and how it affects your performance. The ownership structure of the distribution network will have a huge impact on the type of distribution network. The bulk of this chapter, you know, talks about different types of physical networks and the subsequent flow to distribute products successfully. But really, and equally important is who owns each stage in the distribution network. Distribution networks that have exactly the same physical flow, but different ownership structures can have very, very different performance. So for let's take an example. A manufacturer that owns a distribution network can control the network's action. However, if the manufacturer does not own the distribution network, as is more often the case, a wide variety of issues need to be taken in, into account to optimize over the networks. Obviously, an independent distributor wants to optimize its own enterprise and not necessarily the entire supply chain. Attempting to optimize over a different distribution network with multiple enterprises requires a lot of skill in coordinating the incentives of each of the players and in creating the right relationships. So be sure to consider the impact of both physical flows and ownership structure when designing a distribution network. Second, it is important to have adaptable distribution networks. Distribution networks must be able to adapt to changing technology and environment. An inability to adapt can be very damaging in times of rapid change. Uh, the example is Blockbuster in the movie rental business or Borders in book selling business, which had great successes in the past with retail stores. Their inability to adapt to the arrival of internet allowed competitors like Amazon and Netflix to gain market share at their experience. If either Blockbuster or Borders had adapted to take advantage of the internet to create a tailored distribution network, they could have com competed in this place. Let's take the example of Walmart. A Walmart through 
trial and error has adapted its distribution network to take advantage of the internet along with its existing retail network. Product by price, commoditization, and criticality affect the type of distribution system preferred by customers. Now, interaction between buyer and seller takes time and resources. So it is more convenient for a buyer to deal with a single enterprise that can deliver a full line of products. You would rather go to a large supermarket where everything is there than multi individual stores which have to buy things separately. For high value specialized or critical products, customers are willing to have a relationship solely around that particular product. For low value commoditized products like office supplies, however, most customers prefer a one-stop shop. So while a customer is willing to order laptops directly from Dell or Apple, they prefer to deal with a stationary supplier or store when looking for pens, paper, or staplers. So Apple has been successful with stores selling only Apple products. It's highly unlikely that a stapler manufacturer can actually replicate that success. The next part is to integrate the internet with this existing physical network. To extract maximum benefit from the online channel for physical goods, firms should integrate it with their physical supply chain network. Separating the two network often results in inefficiencies within the supply chain. This coupling of online with existing physical network is often referred to as click and motor. Walmart is an example of how they adapted their bricks and mortar to a click and mortar technology. It is very important to focus and think whether an exclusive distribution strategy is advantageous for a company. And product price, commoditization, and criticality have a huge impact on the distribution system preferred by the customer as discussed before. With this, we finish our um, our lecture on distribution networks uh, and we go on to designing these distribution networks.